Hey guys, Keith Brown, Tack Room Devotional. I'd like to just take a moment to say thank you to all of you who take the time to write in. We appreciate your letters and your words of encouragement or correction. We receive either one. Amen. And we just, uh, again, thank you that you are watching. We also thank those of you who have tucked a little seed in, in, uh, in the mail and sent it to us. Again, um, those kind of things just encourage us because yes it takes a lot of time to put these things together and we appreciate knowing that people are out there receiving and being blessed because of what we've done amen once again thank you this week I want to talk to you about an abundant life now this is the kind of topic I love to preach on amen the abundant life comes from John 10:10. 10, 10. Jesus says the thief does not come but to still kill and destroy but I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Now some people say, well Keith, isn't he talking about heaven? No, because first of all he says the thief comes to still kill and destroy. The thief is not in heaven. He's right here on earth. And so he goes on to say, therefore I, but I have come that you might have life and life more abundantly. He's talking about life here on earth. We can have not just an abundant life but a more abundant life. Hallelujah. Um, if, if, we li if we are not living in the abundant life, then we are be living beneath the privileges that we have as Christians. It's God's desire to do special things for us. Why? It's called grace. His grace, His favor is on us, His children. Um, we should be supernatural beings having human experiences rather than humans uh, human beings having supernatural experiences. Listen to that once again. We should be supernatural beings having human experiences rather than human beings having supernatural experiences. Our everyday life should be supernatural. Amen. Um, Alright, so if, if we do not have an abundant life, then we soon yield to the carnal life, and we can't do that. Remember the carnal life, the carnal mind is um, death, but the spiritual mind is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. That comes from Romans chapter 8, um, and you can look that up. So let's talk about the abundant life is a yielded life. It comes from Romans chapter 6 verse 10 through 13. How to live the abundant life is no secret. It is revealed in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For the death that he uh, for the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, that the life that he lives, he lives to God. That's again Romans chapter 6 verse 10. Faith that saves identifies you with Christ in his death. This is eternal life. But faith that yields identifies you with Christ in his resurrection. This is abundant life. Now get this once again. Faith that saves identifies you with Christ in his death. In other words, when I see, receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I receive what he accomplished for me through his death. See, his death... Um, and the blood that was shed covers or atones for the the sin and remember the wages of sin is death so what Jesus did was he took that out of the way why because his blood satisfied the judgment that was against sin by God amen but faith that yield, uh, that yields in other words when I submit my life to Christ and I say you are the Lord of my life that kind of faith uh, in, his, it, it, uh, in Christ's resurrection and this brings about abundant life. See it's not just about the forgiveness of sin but it now is about my life in Christ, how I live that out. Now remember the Bible says in uh, Galatians 2.20 it says um, um, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live but Christ who lives in me. See it's him living his life out through us as we yield to him. It's one thing to have eternal life by faith. It's quite another thing to have abundant life by faith. Amen. It's one thing for you to become the righteousness of God 
uh, in him, uh, which comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. It's another thing for you to realize his righteousness or his righteous life is in you. That comes from 1 John chapter 3, verse 7. It's one thing for you to live in Christ, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. It's another thing for Christ to live his life through you, Colossians 1, 27. All right? Now, think about those things because Jesus said, I come that you might have life and life more abundantly. It's available to us. Let's yield ourselves to him. Allow him to live his life out through us because why? He's victorious and we want to live a victorious and triumphant life. Hey, Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you. You diligently seek him and serve him.